Recently, I watched a video by YouTuber Danny in which he made a game in 12 hours. This seemed both interesting and challenging, so I decided to try to make a game in 10 hours. If I'm able to do it, I would reward myself by buying Wolfenstein The New Order, as it would be something to motivate me. Also, because I haven't played a good FPS game in a while. I started around 1 pm by creating a new project called King Henry's Castle in Unity. It will be a 2D platformer in which you are a knight sent to find manuscripts hidden in a haunted castle. The first thing I did was downloading free assets from an artist known as Zadi Art. I hope I am pronouncing it correctly. I need two asset packs. One is Pixel Castle 2D which consists of a castle environment. Second is Hero and Opponent's Animation which basically contains pride for our hero and some enemies. Of course the link for both of these will be in the description. I place the main background and drag our player in it. Right now if I play it obviously won't do anything. So I added rigid body to the player so that physics is applied to it and also added a box collider 2D to the body and a circle collider 2D to the legs. I quickly made a tile map called foreground on which our player will stand and added a physics material 2D to it for smooth movement. And we are at a good start. Bruh. Okay so we need to froze the rotation on Z axis and also change our order in layer for our player to be the highest so that it is always visible. And now we are good to go. Oh that's hot. That's hot. Now it was time to start writing code. Although soon it became very clear that I don't remember anything. So I searched the internet from looking at Unity documentations to my old scripts on GitHub. In some time my player started running flipping and jumping. In fact, it was flying to the moon. And obviously we don't want this. So I created a variable ground which when is true, then only our player will jump once. Next I created animations for our player. Creating animations in Unity is quite simple. You drag all the sprites for a particular animation and set the sample rate. Then in animator window, you make a spider web. This is just how transition between different animations will happen with the help of parameters. In our code, we set those parameters to change animation. Now animations are playing with our actions. Although I noticed that for animations of jumping and running, there's no sort attached by the designer, which looks kind of strange. So I use my 200 IQ brain and I open an idle sprite with pixel app and remove everything except the sort. Then I rotated and attached the sword with animations of jumping and running. This doesn't look great but it does the part. Now it is time to define our melee attack system. We attach a box collider with our sword and when it collides with any entity having an interface in hit, it will call the damage function within them and reduce their health. This interface is present in both our player and enemies. With this my player is complete and I am going for my daily walk. Physical activity is necessary and my end goal is that my thighs don't rub against each other when I walk. I am back and it's time to make our enemies. The asset pack contains 5 enemies and I am planning to use 4 of these. And let's just jump straight into enemy logic. So basically the enemy should continuously walk between 2 points. Here they are skeleton start point and skeleton end point. And now it has become the flash. To fix this, we multiply our movement speed with time.delta time. And finally when our player comes close to the enemy, it will stop, turn towards the player and start attacking. Next is the most difficult part, at least for me, which is level design. There are supposed to be 3 levels in this game and you never really make a complete level at once. You make some of it, then move to the next level, do that and come back to the first one. It is a repetitive process, the best thing I can do is to show you this time lapse. Our first level, castle entry is complete. Now we have to make levels for inside castle and boss fight.
Only one and a half hours are left. Some part of level 2 and a large portion of level 3 are still incomplete. Time is running out. But I cannot give up now. It was time to go full force. What is going full force? That is where, and the way I define it, someone is treating it as if they're about to die and they are putting everything behind it. On level 2, I quickly placed a couple of skeleton enemies and using Shinna Machine, I created a virtual camera that will follow my player. In level 3, I first created the final boss, which is just a reflection of the player. So basically, if the player moves left, the reflection will move right, and if the player moves right, the reflection will move left. You can go through it, but if you hit it, you will also get hit, and eventually both of you will die. After that, I started making the rest of the level. This bundle of book on the table are the manuscripts the player is searching for. As soon as you collide with it, the game will automatically close as I hastily coded it that way. Time is up and I'm building my project. I started at 1 in the afternoon and it is 1 in the morning. 12 hours and if I remove the walk and breaks, I work for about 10 hours or 10 hours 15 minutes. And I wasn't able to complete the game but I made it borderline playable which just means that it has a start point and an end point. So let's just go through the game and see what are the major things missing. I'm at the start and instantly I notice two things. There's no sound. No soundtrack and no sound on actions like jumping and swinging the sword. Second, there's no objective. No dialogue or box given instructions on what the player should do. Which is good for some games but not for this one. In level 2, the jump is significantly higher. And the reason I did this was while building these blocks. I didn't took into account the distance between them. So when I was testing in between, I increased the jump value to fix this temporarily and we are kinda stuck with that. Enemies are working fine. They patrol between the starting and ending points. When I get close to them, they fight and when I get away from them, they follow in my direction but still remain in their respective areas, which is exactly how I want it. But there's only one type of enemy which is the skeleton. Initially I wanted four types of enemies and although they would have used the same script as skeleton, I couldn't find time to configure them. Also there are these random vertical blue lines generating which are breaking the tiles. I don't know what is causing them. If any of you do, please mention in the comment section or I will search google to fix these. At the end of the level, there is also an incomplete area from which you can fall infinitely. In level 3, the top of the arena is empty. And the end of the level looks complete, but if you go there, you'll notice that it is broken just like in level 2. Now, nobody in the senses should play this game. But for some of you who want to, I've uploaded it on ish.io. You can directly play it online and the link is in the description. I am a little bit disappointed because I really wanted this to happen. Although I'm a beginner in both Unity and c I've made a couple of platformers with them and thought I could make a complete game in 10 hours. But that's okay, I learned a lot of new stuff and honestly it was fun. I'm definitely going to complete this game and maybe even make a second video about it. Obviously, for now, Wolfenstein has to wait. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time.